I am excited about this lecture mainly because this is my favorite part of Salesforce, talking about the analytics, reports, and dashboards. Uh, and I'm excited to get into this section. So just before we get started, I wanted to talk through a little bit about reports and dashboards. These are really the heart of Salesforce. The dashboard on our right hand side is a macro perspective, right? It's a summary of information from reports. We can have a maximum of 20 charts, graphs, or tables in a dashboard. And dashboards are really, if one can imagine, a place in which one can answer the most important questions that an organization is facing at any moment. And so what we see here are different types of dashboard settings. We have funnels, we have bar graphs, pie charts, donuts, and there are multiple options that one can see from in a dashboard. Now, the important thing to know is that charts and dashboards come from reports, and those reports have to be summary or matrix reports, right? Tabular report types cannot be turned into charts or visuals that can be seen on a dashboard. Okay. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about dashboards in the content section, but let's look at a report. We have the report type at the top, and you have three main features of a report in Salesforce. The first one, I would say, on the left-hand side is the fields. These fields come from the report type, which is the object, right? The object is positions, and these have fields. If you can imagine, a object is like a bucket, and inside that bucket are the different fields that you can choose from. If you change the bucket, you change the fields. So these are our fields. At the top, we have what we call the filters. So filters filter and, and sort information for us. And then at the bottom here, the third section, we have the preview plane, what we see in Salesforce. So when we drag, we can drag and drop from the field section. And this will help us, if we drop it into preview, we'll be able to see the information. And if we drop it into filter, we'll be able to filter out information, such as within a specific time frame, we can show all positions or my positions. So this is just a very quick synopsis and we can also run the report. You'll have a maximum of 50 in the preview, and when you run the report, you'll see more information. Now, what is the relationship between reports and dashboards? Report types come, all of these three pieces are inter interlinked. We have report types, which are linked to reports. Remember, report types help us see different objects, okay, the fields in those objects. So we have report types that pull reports information for us okay and those reports then link to dashboards okay and we can even use things like cross filters joined reports and things like that and these link to information on the dashboard so if I clicked on the dashboard it would take me to a report and that report also is part of a report type okay so this is just some important background information for us to think about the different kinds of reports now I want to talk a little bit about the types of reports that we have. We have tabular, summary, and matrix. Remember, summary and matrix are what we can use to visualize data in a dashboard. As you can see, there's an asterisk over here. You can also use it as a table in the dashboard, but if you want to see a chart or graph, you have to use a summary or matrix report. Okay, so if you want to group data, summary and matrix is probably the best option. Subtotals, once again, summary and matrix. Tabular, however, can give you grand totals, and it can be used, as I said, with an asterisk in a dashboard as well. But you have limited functionality with tables. Think about Excel when you're thinking about tabular. When we're thinking about summary, the summary is that we can group data by contact owners or organization owners, for example. We can get subtotals, grand totals, charts, and we can use it in dashboards, as I've mentioned. But we can't summarize by rows and columns. That's that feature is limited to a matrix report, which can do everything that the summary and table report can do, but it can also summarize by rows and columns. So with the synopsis, let's jump into some questions and answers regarding the reports and dashboard section. So what does the report type determine when a new report is created? Remember the report type was the thing I pointed out earlier, which is the positions report type, for example. We're going to choose three. A, 
the default column in the report, b the fields available to include in the report, c whether the report will be tabular, summary or matrix, d the object included in the report, or e whether the report can be displayed in a dashboard. So we're talking specifically about a report type. Okay. First things first, the report type, remember, determines the kind of fields that we will see in this report. Okay. The report type will not determine whether it's a summary or matrix. It will include the object. So let's take a look. It'll tell us the default columns in the report, as I've just mentioned. It'll also tell us about the fields in the report and finally the object in the report. Remember, whether the report can be displayed in a dashboard comes down to whether it is a table, summary or matrix which applies to all kinds of reports. We are not talking about how the information will be displayed, whether it will be grouped, whether it will be summarized. Those can be done across all report types. What we are talking about is the object, the bucket that we are in, and the bucket tells us the default columns, the fields and the object. A marketing manager needs to view summary metrics across a set of related campaigns. How can this be accomplished? A summary metric, okay? A. Establish the campaign influence between related campaigns. B. Build a lead source report to summarize the campaign metrics. C. Create a cross-object formula field to calculate summary metrics. D. Create a campaign hierarchy and include the related campaigns. Now I've included this question in the reports and dashboards section because it's a, a, a question that cuts across multiple options. All right, so let's look at the options that we have available to us. So the person wants to view summary metrics across a set of related campaigns. Campaigns is the object type. Now, in this case, what we would do is actually create a campaign hierarchy and include the related campaigns, right? So this is related to the hierarchies. But the reason why I included it in this section was because a lot of the answers make you think about a report, all right? So in this case right here. All right, what is available when creating list views? Now, a list view looks like below, all right, where we have the person's name, and we're able to actually do things like mass edit. So if we use this, we could actually select all and edit this. We could also create a new view, which would work similarly to a report, and we can use the pencil to edit in line. So, what is available when creating list views? A. List views can be filtered by record ownership. B. List views can be filtered by tags. C. List views can be filtered using AND, OR, AND, NOT filters. List views can be filtered by re record owner profile. So, because list views act in a similar way to reports, okay, we need to think about, firstly, they can be filtered by record ownership. And C. They, they can be filtered using and or and not filters. All right, so that's the unique part of, li of list views. All right, what type of chart can be used to display summary values from two different levels of a grouping in a report? Okay, so we're thinking about a chart. All right, so let's think about this. Can a donut chart show a grouping? No, it cannot. All right, so we have stacked funnel and grouped line chart. So a stacked bar chart can show us information in a stacked way. All right, so yes, absolutely. Now, let's think about funnel or grouped line chart. When we think about a grouped line chart, let me give you a visual of this. This is a stacked bar graph. What it allows us to do is actually group information by contact owner in this case. All right, the group line chart helps us do the exact same thing. All right, and notice here we have the information and this is an example of a matrix report, okay? And this matrix report gives us the grand total, and it summarizes this by call result and assigned. And so notice how these are grouped, okay? If a Salesforce object is a table, then each row represents what? A field, related object, related list or object, or record? So if a Salesforce object is in a table, then each row represents a record. So let's look at a table, and I'm going to look specifically at this, right? So this is a record. Each of these are records, right? They're not fields. If we were talking about a column, what would each column represent? That would be a field, okay? The object is the report type. That's linked to the report type. 
and the related list is not um, applicable to the situation. Okay. Which functionality is available when enhanced lists are enabled? Choose two. So A, create new records from a list view. B, calculate the sum of a number field displayed in a list view. C, edit dependent pick lists in line from a list view. And D, edit multiple records from a list view. So let's take a moment to think about what the possibilities are here. So enhanced lists, remember, we can always um, edit multiple records from the list view. Remember, we spoke earlier about how the pencil appeared and how we were able to actually edit. And A, we can create new records from a list view. And remember, as we were able at the top to edit, we could also create a new record from there as well. All right, which statement about custom summary formulas in reports is true? Choose two answers. So custom summary formulas, all right? Reports can be grouped by a custom summary formula result. Custom summary formulas can reference a formula field within a report. Custom summary formulas can reference another custom summary formula. And D, custom summary formulas can be used in a report built from a custom report type. So we already know D is true, right? They can be built in a custom report type. So we're looking at C, B, or A. Okay. Custom summary formulas can reference a formula field within a report. Custom summary formulas can reference another custom summary formula. Reports can be grouped by a custom summary formula result. All right. So let's look. D is absolutely correct and B is correct, right? Summary formulas can reference a formula field within a report, okay? So we could say that if something is true in one uh, field, that will influence the custom formula report.